Maine smells it. And um, I've, I've been to the ocean before, but I've never stayed there until this last up, um, late June. Um, and I stayed with um, my husband and his family. And um, one morning he woke up and said he had a dream um, where the only he could remember a line from the, someone's headset in the dream. And this was the line. No fish shall be returned to the ocean in an unorthodox manner. <laughs> and so, like, that sounds like a poem. We gotta work on that for a little bit. So, um, so that's that's the the rule um, from that dream. Um, so, no fish shall be returned to the ocean in an unorthodox manner. In the event that you are tempted to do much more than uncup your hands to release the small slippery shadow back into the wriggling water whence it came. Remember this simple rule of the sea. They are, after all, quite shy, embarrassed easily, and prefer to return home to their shell-lined living rooms well before, well before curfew, lipstickless, and smelling only of salt water and sunshine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Girl Before the Wind, for Brenda. Deep crick in the wind-blown valley calls its bones home. The memory dream blonde-haired girl who called me tiger, who disappeared but did not run away, did not run away over the hills. Golden hair flying, did not run away at all, but lay in the salt marsh reeds until they raised her bones, the saints that placed her on linen cloth. Saints that gave her bones to her mother, the mother that buried her daughter without a coffin under the painting taken before June of 1979, after the spring her grandmother brought her to my fourth birthday, after she gave me a silver foil box with a robin's egg blue bow, and I can't remember what it was, that blue that she gave me, and I should remember, but the mother remembered, never forgot, even after the day she brought her daughter back and placed her in the family plot where the meadow grass grows gold in October, haloed in the light of memory dream, and a silver foil box and a girl that will run forever before the wind that calls her. A little more upbeat here. Uh, <laughs> I'm ocean. In my blood, Pacific, over my skin and wet to my bones, Pacific, under, pulled under by mad river water, my grandfather becomes Pacific, slender rib polished in sand, teeth rolling slick, glitter among moonstones. As my wheelchair rumbles over sidewalk cracks, thump, 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 I vibrate, Pacific, in my breath, in and out, mighty moon pulls my Pacific, in my body, I cannot be still. Water must move over gr bullet gray skin. I place my hand in the Snake River, living vein, blood heat out, cold beat in, Pacific, Pacific. Thank you. a poem about Lot, who was a prophet of the Old Testament, and I just got a, I'm long enough, <laughs> it was just published in this um, little publication called Parody. <laughs> Lot, with apologies to Moses. <laughs> he left her there, a pillar of salt to the mountains he did flee with two virgin daughters scrambling behind as God said it should be. T'was a cave in the, in the hills they did find, a place where they could stay. <clears throat> Lot left the girls to tidy up while he went out to pray. Poor daddy, one gal said to the other, this really is quite a plight. Our mother's a statue of salt back there. With whom can dad spend the night? <laughs> I think it's my call to do the Lord's work. It's my right, I'm older than you. 
When he drinks this wine, he'll lie with me. You can have him when I get through. <laughs> An orgy raged on the mountain that night. Each gal played her part to the letter. In drunken splendor, Lot climaxed it all. Wife, you get better and better. <laughs> then the Lord looked down and said to Lot, Look, these daughters you've defiled. You're righteous and you're clever too. Through each will come a child. This story is one not told in church. In the Bible, you'll need to look. Revelation, scripture, from the pen of God, it's the world's first dirty book. <laughs> Thank you.